All right, my name is John Gibson, uh, president of Tripwire Interactive, and I'm going to show you some of Red Orchestra 2. Red Orchestra 2 is our new game. It is a World War II first-person shooter, and we're getting ready to show you some of the single player. This is the first time tonight we're ever showing off the single player. And let's show you some of the, the Allies campaign. So Red Orchestra 2 takes place uh, in the battles of Stalingrad uh, in 1942 and early 1943. And what you're hearing here is the, the mission brie briefing. Uh, we, we start each battle uh, with uh, basically one of the generals kind of giving you the context of what was going on with the soldiers at that moment. Um, let's just take a minute to let this guy uh, do his thing. As you can hear, he's, uh, he's uh, very passionate about his cause. So uh, what we're going to be doing in this particular mission is uh, we're fighting for an area that the uh, Germans have taken and the Russians are now trying to take it back. Now one of the unique things about the game, and right here you're seeing the Russian campaign, but we actually have a single player campaign that you can play completely through as the Germans as well as the Russians. And it's the first time uh, anyone's ever done a single player first person shooter or campaign. Uh, with the Germans, so we're real excited to, uh, to bring that to the game. One of the uh, interesting things about Red Orchestra 2 here at Stalingrad is how the, uh, how the campaign works. So in traditional single player campaigns, you play as one single soldier uh, throughout a mission, and if you die, that's it, your mission is over, you load a save or you start again. In Red Orchestra 2, you actually play as the squad, so if your player, if your player is taken out and dies, it gets taken out and dies. You'll actually come back as one of the uh, one of the remaining squad members, and you'll probably see that happen to me at some point. Well, let's get in here and see if we can clear out some of the enemy. So, I'll bring up my tactical view here. I can see where my objective is. Let's see if I can show off a little bit of the first-person cover. So you can see here, I can walk up to cover. I can lock right on. Whoa! There's an enemy near me. Uh, when I go into iron sights, I instantly pop up and I go back down. I can blind fire my weapon over the cover. I can very quickly peek up. I can even uh, blind fire grenades over cover, around cover. So really the interaction with first person cover is one of the unique things about the game and one of the things that, that uh, really sets it apart. Let's get back in here. Another thing that I can do is give commands to my, to my AI squad members. So let's see if I can do that now. I can select, uh, for instance, my assault team. I'll order them to come in here and attack the enemy and help me clear and help me clear them out. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell them to uh, go ahead and do their own thing. With, with commanding the AI, you can really you can really do it three different ways in the game. If you don't want to if you don't want to mess with commanding the AI, you can just let them go. They'll do their own thing. They'll do a pretty good job of figuring out what to do. You can also give them high level tactical commands like say attack this objective and they'll go in and figure out the best way to attack it. You can also just give individual movement commands to your different AI fire teams and actually kind of micromanage where you want them to go. So it's really kind of tailored to all different styles of players. Me, I think I need a little help here, so let's see if I can get, a, see if I can get the assault team in there to kind of clear some of these guys out. And I just blew myself up with my own grenade. Don't try that at home. Let's try that assault again. All right, let's get everybody in here. And I'm having the best luck with my grenades tonight. At some point, I will kill an enemy with a grenade. 
All right, I'm going to tell my AI uh, squad members to follow me. They can kind of be my bodyguards. All right, and what you just saw me do there was blind firing a grenade around the corner, another one of the things that you can do from cover. This time, not blowing myself up. <laughs> and clearing out the enemy in the process. So we're working our way through the battlefield here. We've just captured this objective. Now, our, now we've got to move up and uh, come into the next objective. All right, let's see if I can... Yep. Nope. Marksman again. One of the uh, one of the neat things you'll see me demonstrating here is our 3D scope system. So you can see I can aim through this the the the, the, the actual lens of the of the scope, which is a uh, which is really cool. But also I can switch. Well, I could have switched to the iron sights if I hadn't died. All right. So let's see here. I've got. My squad members are now uh, now replenished. Let's see if I can get in here and clear these guys out. They do not want to give up this area. All right, so let's tell the guys to just go ahead and attack however they'd like. And the enemy has won this round.